Evolution of Consciousness When experience first began, also known as the moment of the Big Bang, you could say that our entire universe was at the boundary of time. As it expanded, it also slowed down in its orbit, causing it to drift towards center. As our experience of the universe drifts closer and closer to the center of time, it follows the habitable spiral of perception. Each habitable distance or harmonic from center allows for a new experience or harmonic to be created. Conscious beings would not be tuned to flows of space that have never existed. Therefore, in order for a being to gain a conscious harmonic, that flow of space-time must exist first. This being said, the first conscious wave type that would have come into existence would be that of the longest waves. For human consciousness, with prime multiplier of 2, that would be the 1.25 Hz delta wave, which has a diameter of 1 times 10 to the 7 meters. The next conscious wave type that would come into existence would be the theta wave type, followed by the alpha, then beta, slow gamma, and ultimately fast gamma. Based on this model, you could say that the next conscious harmonic that will be appearing in human experience will be what we have named the omega wave, or aliverse. This wave, or experience, relates to conscious harmonics ranging from 101 to 220 hertz, with an average of 160. The cloud diameter associated with this wave type would be 625 meters. When it comes to information, it would have approximately 70 billion bits per delta sphere. A daily orbit. Throughout our day, our bodies naturally follow the rising and setting of the sun. This includes our conscious harmonics. This cycle is known as the circadian rhythm. Let us now map our daily orbit around the center of time so we may gain more insight onto the nature of reality. Here is a very simple schedule that outlines the maximum conscious harmonic in relationship to time of day. Let's start from the moment we enter our deltaverse. A circadian rhythm properly tuned to nature will follow as so. From approximately 11.30 p.m. to 2.30 a.m., our primary conscious harmonic is the delta wave. From 2.30 a.m. to about 5.30 a.m., we are in theta waves. Then from 5.30 a.m. to 7 a.m., we are in alpha waves. Throughout the day, from 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., we flux from beta to alpha, but are primarily in beta. As we start to wind down, our conscious harmonics start to slow. From 7.30 p.m. to about 10.30 p.m., we are in alpha. Then from 10.30 p.m. to 11 p.m., we drop back into theta. The Delta Verse Starting from midnight, we see that our primary conscious harmonic is the delta wave. As morning approaches, our consciousness enters the halfway point between harmonizing with the delta wave versus the theta wave. At this moment, approximately 2.30 a.m., and at a radius of 6 times 10 to the 5 meters, is when our antenna switches to the theta state. The Thetaverse As conscious tuning follows its natural orbit, it accelerates towards the center of time. At approximately 5.30 a.m., at a distance of 1.5 times 10 to the 5 meters, our orbit falls into the halfway point between theta and alpha. This is the moment when our antenna switches from theta to alpha. The Alphaverse Soon after, at approximately 7 a.m., our conscious density then reaches the beta state, which occurs at 37,500 meters from center. The Betaverse It seems for the next 12 hours, from 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., we are in a tight elliptical orbit that passes us through the beta and alpha several times throughout the day. Then at approximately 7.30 p.m., it is as if we have a gravitational slingshot towards the outer edge. This causes us to pace through the theta state rather quick as we once again enter the delta range. Our orbit then starts again. It is also possible our conscious antenna orbits along the boundary line between alpha and beta and that actions that require more cognitive capability are what trigger the switching between alpha and beta throughout the day. Skipping off conscious atmosphere. From the mind, body, and spirit diagrams introduced in the liquid light state universe, we see that we may take posture in our magic sphere. Taking a posture is a result of ego, or one's control over their existence. When naturally entering a transition zone, it is possible to use your focus to bounce off of the atmosphere of the next harmonic. The intentional lack of synchronization with the natural orbit will cause you to swing back out, or rather stay locked in your conscious harmonic. 
This bouncing off conscious density occurs at all boundaries. Direction towards center. By looking at our daily orbit of conscious density, we are able to theorize on which direction may be towards the center of time. It appears as our bodies physically get closer to the sun that our conscious density changes accordingly. This implies that the center of density for our local area in space-time would be towards the sun. When we consider the greater structure, the center may be towards the galactic center. Considering this, it may be appropriate to use sidereal time when making interdimensional technologies that are designed to guide the flow of the fluid of time. Ascension through time. From this model, you can see that the universe naturally drifts towards center as it matures or gathers information from the fractal perspective outside our warped frame. While drifting inward, new conscious harmonics are formed. This natural drifting of our experience inward aligns with the pacing motions of all our lives and experiences. Both work in unity to bring you closer to the center of time. The Silver Spot Let's now consider the concept of the silver spot. We can say that the golden spot refers to the direct center of all time and moments. Meanwhile, the silver spot represents your current life or manifestation. Because we exist, we also experience. Light state harmony at the moment of conscious shift determines where you'll be starting your next life or experience. You, being a mind with wants, don't wants, assumptions, and expectations, will then pace about your silver spot as your personal philosophy or ways change from the experiences had. By the end of your conscious experience, the lessons learned in life will have shaped your magic sphere into a more harmonized version of yourself thus allowing you to gain higher harmonics of density. In some cases, the pacing nature and lessons learned are not achieved. When this is the case, the silver spot may drift outward as it has become less harmonious and is therefore less able to create denser harmonics within the magic sphere. This lack of development typically stems from focusing on the exterior, materialistic world versus your internal world. Many times, people will become hypnotized by societal delusions which have been propagated by media and other overwhelming outlets. It is important to focus on your personal development and not worry about others. As Einstein said, worry is a misuse of imagination. Quantum Entanglement If matter is energy crunched and light energy stretched, then there exists a state between the two that is reality. When you crunch light and stretch matter, you see that it forms a single solid crystal. The easiest way to explain entanglement would be to say that it is like sound waves, propagating through the fifth dimension or raw energy of experience. You can easily see how the waves will cross paths of various densities as well as locations in the past and future, casting shadows of experience as it does. From our perspective, this would give the illusion of faster-than-light happenings. One note is that the word quantum typically implies very small. These happenings exist on both sides of reality, stemming from the lower verse as well as the noviverse. Quantum interactions of smaller, denser vibrations would stem from the noviverse, while larger fluctuations would be coming from the lower verse side. These fluctuations occur within our experience as they are harmonics of the perceivable universe, as in factors of our consciousness. Interdimensional Geometry Understanding that our reality of the now moment only exist in our accelerative reference frame and is a function of warped space-time, we may design geometries that exist within all of time and not simply the human experience. The geometries designed would need to be the opposite of our warping factor. We would see that for any object existing in our experience, after the moment has passed, light would crunch and matter would stretch back. These interdimensional geometries could act and work in similar ways that our modern geometries work but through all of time, and not just our now. We can create antenna that send signals to various densities of experience, as well as moments in time. We can design robots that may interact with all of time.